truly want to thank the Lord for for this opportunity to study the Word of God. And uh, the more we study, the more you know we know our Christ. And uh, of course, when it comes to sanctuary, a lot of people are afraid to touch this part because uh, it's just old tools, you know, like oh yeah, candlesticks, uh, ark of covenant, you know, uh, the laver or the showbread. What is the you know? No point. There's no significant for me to really study. That's why a lot of people don't really touch or don't really study the, the I mean when it comes to the part of sanctuary but uh, truly thank God that you know we as Adventists we take this sanctuary um, light alright this sanctuary uh, lesson and the sanctuary really plays a big part of Christ how Christ has come down to earth to die for you and I alright so the, the difference between of our church and other churches is a century message all right we are strongly believing in the century message and um, let me just share my screen while sh while I'm sharing the screen uh, kindly think of a story or anything that comes you know in your mind regarding light or right? anything in the Bible that comes into your mind regarding light um, you can type in the group chat all right let's participate a bit um, something that refers or you can think about whenever I say light when I say light in the Bible what does it come to your mind all right of, co of course let's see what what do people say okay let that be light all right the book of Matthew yes or in, or in the Genesis yes when God says let that be light all right there's many stories in the Bible talking about light as well all right you are the light of the world yes amen few more let's go few more yes we are the light of the world yes Jesus is the light amen Jesus says I am the light yes beautiful there are many many uh, stories or you know the word of Christ telling us that he's the light and of course you also uh, yes light unto my path right in the book of Psalms right Christ talking about light and everything that light and light is so important for us. Alright, the pillar of fire, yes. The time of Israelites where when they were in the wilderness, God covered them and give them what? Fire by night and clouds by day. Pillar of clouds by day. So I believe light is very important to all of us. Alright? Just imagine there's no light in your house. Alright, for, for one week. Well, it's gonna be very difficult. Alright, to see each other or to see your family members or to even look at to cook or to see whatever is in the room or in your house. It's very difficult. But the light is so important, alright? And the golden candlestick is the only light was is in the sanctuary. Alright, is in the sanctuary. Alright, thank you so much for for participating. The golden candlestick. Of course, we have gone through the the courtyard, alright? And the holy place and the most holy place where the courtyard represents the justification. Uh, the holy place talks about the sanctification. And the most holy place talking about uh, glorification. Another symbol that we can have is that um, when the Israelites were, when they were in the Egypt as a slave, uh, they have to uh, slain the animal, alright? That's called in the time of justification. And uh, it's just symbolic, alright? And when the time of Israel, right, moving to the uh, to the holy place is where they go in the wilderness, all right, getting to know more of Christ, where Christ was intervening with them, and they also get to know the experience of God. And of course, glorification is a time of the promised land, where they were in the promised land. And I believe all of us can't wait for the time where we enter the promised land of God. And before further ado, let's have a word of prayer, all right, let's ask, let's ask God to give us the light that we need to study His word. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you so much for being so good to us. I believe that in this time of trouble, we need to be the light, Lord. But help us to see the, the ultimate source of light, which is Jesus, our Savior. Lord, I pray that as we're going to study a word, I pray that all of us will not only be hearers of the word, but help us to be doers of the word. But because this message is of is for everyone lord that we're going to be the witness and we're going to be the light in this dark world we thank you so much for everything we pray in jesus name amen all right i would love if you have your bible with you because 
I will not project it because uh, it's, it's good that we search the Bible together. All right, let's search the Bible together. Let's turn our Bible to Exodus 25. Exodus 25, verse 31 all the way to 40. All right, 31 to 40. Talking about the candlesticks, okay? Exodus 25, 31 to 40. All right, 31 to 40. Okay. Okay, I'll read. He says in Exodus 25, verse 31 to 40, And thou shalt make a candlestick of pure gold. Of beaten work shall the candlestick be made. His shaft and his branches, his bowls, his knobs, and his flowers shall be of the same. And six branches shall come out of the side of it, three branches of the candlesticks out of the one side, and three branches of the candlestick on out of the other side okay maybe some of you may be confused let me go to this part here okay i want you to look carefully in the picture because when you just read you will not understand so if, while i'm reading you may look at the picture and see all right what i'm talking about what the bible says all right so in verse 32 it says and six branches shall come out of the side of it three branches of the candlestick out of the one side and three branches of the candlestick of the, uh, of, the, uh, of the other side. Three bowls made like unto almonds with a knob and a flower in one branch. And three bowls made like almonds in the other branch with a knob and a flower. In the six branches that come out of the candlestick. In verse 34, And in the candlestick shall be uh, four bowls made like unto almonds with their knobs and their flowers. In verse 35, and there shall be not under two branches of the same, and a knob under two branches of the same, uh, and a knob under under two branches of the same, according to the six branches that proceeds out of the candlestick. Verse 36, he says, their knobs and their branches shall be of the same, and shall be one beaten work of pure gold. Alright, this is made of gold, right? 37, and thou shalt make the seven lamps thereof, and they shall light the lamps thereof, and they may give light over against it. Verse 38, and the tongs thereof and the snuff dishes thereof shall be made of pure, shall be of pure gold. Of a talent of pure gold shall he make it with all these vessels. And look that thou make them after their pattern which was shoot thee in the mount. So, I believe as we are looking in this part of candlestick, alright, let us just uh, focus just for a short moment, alright. This is very, very important for us. Uh, in Exodus 25 verse 31, it says, Thou shalt make a candlestick that is only one candlestick. Okay, so uh, and also and also in Exodus 25, verse 35, it says two branches of the same and a knob under the branches of the same, according to six branches that proceeds out of the candlesticks. So one candlestick, six branches. Okay, look at look carefully, yeah. So this is wait, let me draw. I hope I can draw this. Alright. Okay, so when God says this branch, so this is the main branch, okay. This is the main branch, and God says there will be three on each side. One, two, three, and one, two, three. And these are all made of pure gold, all right? And you can look at the screen. It says uh, there's flower on each um, candle, right? uh, candle, each candle. And there's knobs, there's three cups. There are seven branches, all right? And one in the center. Then there is uh, flowers, and you can see the base, all right? And also the stem. All right, where they beat, uh, these are the stem, and it's all made of gold, and mixture of, uh, of course, there is made of uh, the light part where is uh, the flower. I mean, the where the, they put the lighting, is come. There's a wix on it. All right, you can see this the part they put a wix, uh, for to light, and some scholars say that they use the wix of the rope of the, the priest. All right, the ropes of the priest, the threads of the priest. I mean, the rope of the priest. The the they. They, I mean, at the end when it's old, they take it and they put it this as a for lighting, right? As a wick. So let's go to the part. I believe all of us can understand here. Okay, these are the knobs. All right, these are the knobs. All right, and these are the three branches, and there's flower in in the candles. Uh, the flower shapes in the candlestick. All right. So as we go uh, forth. The next part, wait, let me erase this. This reminds what does this remind us of? 
all right branches connecting to one another what does it uh, reminds us of it reminds us of in john chapter 15 verse 4 to 5 all right i believe all of us know this abide in me and i in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the wine vine no more can he except he abide in me i am the vine ye are the branches he that abideth in me and i in him the same bringeth forth much fruit for without me he can do nothing so john chapter 15 verse 5 he says what without the vine there will be no branches all right if you look at a picture here the tree okay how does the tree grow it is needed to have the support of the vine all right which is internal and the outside of the external which are the branches so without the vine there will be no support there will be no life in the branches all right the branches will be dead to be connected so same goes to our church uh, same goes to us without us connecting to christ we are nothing all right so we need to be connected uh, jesus is the ultimate vine all right and christ is the one who gives us a source of life and we are able to come to him like the trees all right we need to have the source of life which is christ so same goes to here we depend on jesus for spiritual life all right none of us are able to uh, do good things without the word of uh, without the uh, ho- without the guidance of god so we need to depend for our spiritual life all right in this in this part here go represents pure all right or faith in first peter chapter 1 verse 7 and all of us i believe we need to have faith to abide in jesus faith will only keep you there so let us remember okay like this like this uh, candlesticks we need to be connected to the ultimate christ which is in the middle all right which is the ultimate and i believe that all of us will remember this all right we are like the candlesticks connected to to christ like the branches without christ we are nothing for without me he can do nothing and we are not able to bear fruit as well, all right what else does the candlestick represent okay what else does the candlestick represents of course it represents christ but what else does the candlestick represents all right let's turn our bible to revelation chapter 1 verse 21 verse 20. if you like to ask jeffrey to read first if possible hope you can unmute yourself yeah um all right we got again revelation chapter 1 verse 20 what else does the candlestick represent The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches okay so here he, thank you uh, brother jeffrey it represents church all right it represents church a life of faith will lead to fellowship with believers at church so uh, these candlesticks represents church all right and what is the purpose of church is it just for fellowship Okay, what is the purpose of church? Is it because we just come together for fellowship? Of course, fellowship is important. What does the church do? What must the church do? Uh, what is the purpose of the church? What is the purpose of the candlestick? Alright, of course, the answer is to give light. Alright, if you just have the candle and without the light, there's no point. There's no source of it. So you need to have the light. Alright, so to give light and the purpose of God's church is to give light. Alright, we are the light of the world like what all of you said what else what does the light represent okay of course the candlestick represents church what does the light represent okay let's turn our bible to psalms 119 verse 105 okay what does the light represents okay i think i can see cindy okay cindy can you read for me uh psalms 119 verse 105 what does the light represent Psalms 119 verse 105 says, The word is a lamp unto my feet and the light unto my path. Yes, so the light. The light is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto our path. So light represents God's word. All right, Without God's word, we have no direction. All right, And there's no hope. So light, light represents God's word. Let's see what Psalms 119 verse 130 says. Alright, maybe I'd like to ask 
Um, Sean, Sean, can you read first? Psalms 119 verse 130. What does the light represent? Um, it says here, um, Psalms 119 verse 130, it says, The unfolding of your words give, gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. Yes, so the entrance of thy words giveth life. You know, the word of God is so beautiful in a way that even, you know, even those who have not educated Oh, I have never gone to study or not. don't really know about um, education. Once you read the Word of God, you're able to improve your English, of course, but you're able to change your life through the Word of God. All right, the Word of God is different compared to the storybooks that you read or the magazines that you read. Right, the Word of God is totally different. Even, even though how many times you listen to the Word of God, same story sometimes. A, uh, you know, a preacher will a preach story of the same story I've heard many, many times, but... In that lesson, you're able to understand different principles. You're able to understand uh, different lessons and you're able to apply it. So the word of God is the light unto our path. All right. So the purpose of the church is to give light, is to shine the word of God. Okay. So what is the purpose of the shining light? We need to understand what is the purpose. Okay. We shine. Okay. The candle is the church. Then the light is, of course, the word. But... What is the purpose of the shining light? Just stay stagnant, is it? Can the lighthouse just, just be a church, all right? And just knowing the word of God and just be stagnant? No, all right? We need to be a church of what? Let's see, huh? let's see what the Bible says. Let's turn our Bible to Matthew chapter 5, 14 to 16. The purpose of a shining light. What is the purpose of it? Okay, Matthew chapter 5. Okay, Sister Jennifer, can you read for me? Matthew chapter 5, 14 to 16. Okay, Matthew chapter 5, verse 14 to 16. Verse 14, You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Verse 15, Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand and it gave light to all who are in the house. Verse 16, Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works, and glorify your Father in heaven. Matthew 5, 14 Amen. to 16. Amen. Amen. So in this, uh, in this verse, he's talking about what? Let your light what shine. All right, ye are the light of the world. So in Matthew chapter 5, 14 to 16, to summarize it, he says others will shine their lights as well. Right? As you read the word of God, as you teach the word of God, and people may see the light as well. All right? That's what Lighthouse Church is all about. That's the word. That's why the Lighthouse Church is called what? Lighthouse. The Lighthouse. Yeah, he gives the light to people. All right? It shines, especially where uh, if you are seeing in Dr. Chu's place, all right, there's a big lighthouse there. It's called the Pulatikus Lighthouse. All right? And... Uh, just imagine, all right. Just imagine there's a, a you know, we've been, we've been there many times, all right, with Ice and myself and, and Pastor Robert, you know, we go for canoeing and all this. When we go there, just, and sometimes we come back late, and without the light, uh, it's very difficult for us to see. So there's almost, there's a part where we almost uh, uh, get drowned, you know, almost died. But because of the light, it's able to shine, we are able to see how to come back. So the light is so, so important for us, all right. So, what must we do as a lighthouse? We need to shine the light. Alright? In Acts chapter 13 verse 47, let's see what the Bible says. Acts chapter 13 verse 47. Is brother, uh, Uncle Dennis is there? I can see you. Can you read first Acts chapter 13 verse 47? Acts 13 verse 47. Yeah. What is the purpose of the shining light? Okay. Acts chapter 13 verse 47. Uncle Dennis can unmute. Verse 47. All right. 1347. For so had the Lord command, commanded us saying, I have set thee to be a light of the Gentile that thou shouldest be for salvation unto the end of the earth. 
Amen. Thank you, Brother Denise. The Lord commanded and he says, uh, commanded us and he said what? I have set thee be a light of these Gentiles. Alright, so Gentiles are those who are unbelievers, who have who don't really know about Christ. Alright? So we have to set to be the light of the Gentiles. So what is the purpose of the shining light? What is the purpose of Lighthouse Church? Is to bring more people to know about Christ. Alright? We need to spread the word of God to others. But what helps the candle to shine? Ah, okay, the candle cannot just shine alone, right? Alright, what, what helps the candle to shine? The candle needs, needs the support of the oil, alright? What does the oil represent? Okay, uh, let's see, uh, what does the oil represent? Let's turn our Bible to Zechariah chapter 4, 2 and verse 6. Chapter, uh, verse 2 and verse 6, okay? Verse 2 and verse 6, chapter 4. Zechariah chapter 4. Zechariah is in the Old Testament. Alright. Chapter 4. 2 and 6. Alright. I think I can see Pastor Robert is ready to read. Uh, Pastor Robert, can you read first? Zechariah chapter 4. 2 and 6. Verse 2, it says, And he said unto me, What seest thou? And I said, I have looked, and behold, a candlestick of gold, or a candlestick all of gold with a bowl upon the top of it, and his seven lamps thereon, and seven pipes to the seven lamps, which are upon the top thereof. Verse 6, it says, Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Amen. So, Zechariah chapter 4, verse 2 to 6, it represents the, whole, the oil represents the Holy Spirit. Okay, Holy Spirit. Let's see what else does the oil represent. All right. Okay, let's see. Okay, let's turn our Bible to Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. All right. Brother Jason, can you read first? Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Yeah, praise Lord. Yeah, Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Uh. Okay, here we go. Praise Lord. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Praise Lord. Yes. So, thank you, Brother Jason. To be a witness, all right? To be a witness for God. But we need to be a witness for God, witnesses for God. So it's not only a, a lighthouse church, you know, it's just stagnant, okay? We know the word of God, okay? We are just shining from our church inside. But you're not able to reach outside to be a witness. That is very sad. And if you do not have the Holy Spirit burning in you, you know, you don't have, uh, you don't ask the Holy Spirit to work in you, wow, you are just a fruitless person, all right? You need the Holy Spirit to guide you, all right? Of course, in Exodus 35 verse 14, let's see what the Bible says. Exodus 35 verse 14. I had to ask my wife, Jesseline, to read for me. Exodus 35 verse 14. Okay, Exodus chapter 35 verse 14. The lampstand that is for light with its accessories, lamps and oil for the light. Okay, so the main purpose of the candlestick is not to give you food, okay? The main purpose of the candlestick is to give you light. So, true movement of the Holy Spirit is to make the Bible shine. Alright, so this is what uh, it emphasizes. We need to move. Alright, if you do not move, if the light doesn't shine, alright, you're not able to shine for others. So, what's the purpose of light? Okay, let me give you an example. Uh, when I was in the Philippines, alright, um, is our, is our uh, time, you know, when you're in the fourth year, uh, it's called, um, you're supposed to do your internship, alright, in different churches. So I went to one of the churches. It's from my college to another church. All right, Pastor Robert was in another church. I was in another church. Um, we used to, we need to go and help the pastors there, all right, to learn to be a pastor. So what happened was, I will bring extra clothes. Okay, so the first time, because they said when you go to the new church, you need to go for hiking, all right? Not like here, you go to the lighthouse, take car, you go there, right? But I have to hike to church, all right? I have to hike to church. I did not. I I really didn't know that we're gonna stay uh, very long there. But I got. Thank God, I brought uh, extra clothes. The first week I went, right. 
they ask me to they say before you go to church before you go to church you need to wear a uh, sport attire then i said how can i'm going to church why must i wear sport attire for they said we are going for hike hike i thought we are going to church they said yeah we need to hike to church i was like wow okay wow this is something cool you know so what happened was i wore my uh, sports attire then went for hiking while i was hiking halfway um there's a lot of mud all right step on the mud oh yo my leg now it's like oh yo should i just go back you know and change or you know come back again but i was think that then the 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 one of my friends said don't need no we just go to church clean our feet and continue all right so what happened was we continue going to church all right hike hike sweat you know can you imagine you sweat to church so when we go to church we do not sit there what happened was once we attend and uh, enter the church we straight go to the toilet go to the toilet to do what to change to a uh, your church attire all right we we went we wear our church attire so once we wear a church attire then we come back and do the service well, but but there's a problem there after vespers you you sunset very early all right in the philippines it sunset by 5:30 all right and the problem is that when you hike it's very dark and the worst part is when you hike you do not know what is around you because it's so dark all right so one of my friend has a, has a phone all right he was shining the light but the problem was we stayed there till daytime all right still the i mean the from morning until evening the battery almost died okay battery almost died so what happened was we were shining the light you know and my friend was shining the light and most of us our battery was almost dying already so while while, while we are hiking while i fell on the mud you know i couldn't really see the pathway i fell on the mud and it was so difficult for me to get up and by the time i get up all my shirt is all muddy again i was so frustrated say wow go to church and so it's a big hassle and then my friend was uh, pushing me and say let's go let's go and when while we were walking the the phone battery died all right the source of light gone so it was very it was very difficult for us while we are hiking back we are so it was so difficult for us then we were praying say lord we cannot see we cannot really see how to go back you know it's very difficult is is in the jungle lord please help us while we were praying we saw a person coming by with the flashlight it was one of the uh, church member was uh, picking up something and he was coming on the way back then he saw us on the, on the way and says oh you guys how you guys you guys are you know stranded and you you don't have light by your side he says don't worry okay when you are coming uh, i'll i'll bring you back to your church i'll bring you back to your campus and he shine the light for us halfway till we get to see another light in the lamp uh, i mean another uh, another light around so the uh, experience is really really uh, this experience i had was very remarkable because can you imagine you go to church by sweating and by hiking and the experience i ever had was a difficult moment is coming back in the dark without you know you're not able to see the pathway all right and someone you need to pray and thank god god send someone to shine the light and i i believe what does it represent it reminds me of this uh if you do not have the light if you do not ask god for the holy spirit in you we cannot move we are not able to in, we are not able to touch people's heart all right we can just i pray that all of us have this light all right so in this part um when you go to the beaten oil let's in our bible to exodus 27 was 20 he's talking about beaten oil all right why why must this oil uh, must be beaten why what's the purpose of it okay x 27 was 20 let's in our bible there x 27 was 20 i'm almost done x 27 was the uh, 20 all okay brother james is there right okay good i like brother james to read for us exodus 27 was 20 what does the bible say Exodus twenty-seven. Command the Israelites to bring you clear oil of pressed olive for the light, so that the lamps may be kept burning. Yes, the oil needs to be beaten, all right, beaten, and pure olive oil beaten for the light to cause the lamp to burn always. It needs to be. beaten to be pure all right and the word beaten here in the root word is called destroy beat down smite beat in pieces crush and stamp do you know who represents this who went through the suffering experiences who was beaten down is christ jesus all right christ jesus has went through 
the beaten process. Alright, let's turn our Bible to Isaiah 53 verse 4. Let's see what the Bible says. Isaiah 53 verse 4. I will read. Isaiah 53 verse 4. Okay, I'll read. It says, Surely he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. And of course, in verse 5, he says, He was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes, we are healed. Alright, same in this. Uh, in, this one represents the beaten oil of how Jesus has experienced the, the beating for us, or right? how much he has suffered for us on the cross. It's very beautiful how everything, every part of this sanctuary uh, compartments tell us about, and it points us to Christ Jesus. The Holy Spirit. How do we receive the Holy Spirit? Okay, how do we receive the Holy Spirit? Of course, we know the Holy Spirit is the oil. How do we receive the Holy Spirit? In Luke 11 verse 13. Okay, let's turn our Bible to Luke chapter 11 verse 13. Okay, Brother Adrian is there. Okay, long time, never hear your voice. Can you read first Luke chapter 11 verse 13? Hang on, ah. Huh? Alright, Luke chapter 11 verse 13. How do we receive the Holy Spirit? Alright, this is the question that we have. How do we receive? Verse 13, uh, If... If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in Heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? Yes, how do we receive the Holy Spirit? Is by prayer. Alright, by prayer. Say, Lord, I want, please guide me with the Holy Spirit and send me the Holy Spirit to guide me in my life. This is what our everyday prayer must be. Alright, thank you, Brother uh, Adrian, for reading it. How do you know if someone has the Holy Spirit or not? Uh, this is another question. How do you know? Alright, let's turn our Bible to Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 to 26. Alright, Galatians chapter 5, 22 to 26. This one it represents the fruit of the Spirit. Okay, Galatians chapter 5, 22 to 26. Okay, I'll read. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, and faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. Alright, and here it talks about we as a Christian, we as, as an Adventist, we need the fruit of the Holy Spirit. This must be our everyday prayer. Lord, help me to be humble. Right? Help me to be gentle. Help me to be, have faith in you. Help me to have goodness. Help me to be good to people. Alright, help me to reach out to people. This must be our everyday prayer. And Romans chapter 5 verse 5, let's see what the Bible says. Romans chapter 5 verse 5. Okay, let me ask Brother Cedric. Ah, my favorite student. All right. Romans chapter 5, verse 5. Let's see. We need the fruit of the Spirit, and what else do we need? Romans 5, verse 5. And hope does not put us to shame. Because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Yes, we need the love of God. Alright, love of God. This is, must be our everyday prayer. Say, Lord, we want the fruit of the Spirit. Alright, we want to be a great example for you. We want to be the light. But if the light doesn't have the Holy Spirit in us, what's the point? Alright, we are not able to shine. So we need the love of God, the fruit of the Spirit. How long do we keep shining? Ah, this is a very good question. Do we just, okay, bring one soul to Christ? To be a witness, then finish. Or uh, what? How long do we keep shining? All right, it's a very good question. You know, sometimes people say, "Oh, after I get baptized, I think that's the end, lah." All right, that's the end. Or well, after I bring one soul, I say, "God say, okay, bring more soul." All right, in um, the book of Matthew. All right, it says twenty-eight. It say, "Go ye therefore." All right, just bring one soul. Is it? I, I think after one soul, I'm done already. Is it like that? Let's see what the Bible says. How long do we keep shining? All right. Let me ask um, Dylan, can you read for us? Leviticus 24, verse 4. Leviticus 24, verse 4. 
Leviticus uh, 24 verse 4. How long do we keep shining? Okay. 24 verse 4. He shall be in charge of the lamps on the pure gold lampstand before the Lord continually. Amen. So you can see from here, the word, uh, this word in Hebrew is called tamit. All right, means continually. Is it because, uh, okay, after I baptize, I'm done already, all right, or don't need to go to church already. Lah. I have no point of going to church or no point of attending church. Uh, maybe I just bring one soul to Christ, I think I'm done already. No. The, the cap, we as the light, we need to continually shine. All right, it's not uh, every day. I mean, it's not a day to day process. It's every single day. All right, every single day we have to continually shine. All right. All right, in Testimonies, volume chapter, uh, volume 6, it says, The Holy Spirit will come to all who are begging for the bread of life to give to their neighbors. The disciples, uh, this is very interesting, the disciples did not ask for a blessing for themselves, all right, in the time of Pentecost. They were weighed with the burden of souls. The gospel was to be carried to the ends of the earth, and they claimed the endowment of power that Christ had promised. That in was the Holy Spirit was poured out and thousands was converted in the day. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we are the light of the world. But don't just take it as okay, we are just a light. Alright, we are the church as a candlestick, we are just a light. But we need to keep on shining. Alright, so to review, remember, we are the church, the candlestick is a church, the Holy Spirit is the oil, and of course the light, we need to shine the word of God to be a witness. For Christ. Amen. That is our ultimate goal, to be a witness for Christ. Well, if you look at the sanctuary structure, wow, can you see the sanctuary structure? This, every part of the compartments leads or points to Jesus Christ, our Savior. So in this part, you can see that every word that we search from God, all right, every, search that, uh, every word that we search in the sanctuary leads to the cross, which is Jesus. All right, you can see a clearer picture here from all the way to the outer court, to the holy place and the most holy place, we are pointed and see Jesus Christ as our Savior. Matthew chapter 5, verse 16, he says, You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Brothers and sisters in Christ, I believe and I pray that we not only be hearers of the word, but we need to be doers of the word. Now we are living in a place where uh, it's in the dark world. We are living in a dark world. Uh, due to this pandemic, there are so much problems in life. But let's look at the characteristics, uh, the characters in the Bible. When Moses saw the burning bush, the light, he saw the presence of God. When, 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 um, when Paul or when Saul went the road of the road to Damascus, he was hit by the light. All right, you got blinded, and from there his life was changed. The light, we are the light of the world. And if Paul, from Saul to Paul, he was used to criticize, he used to uh, kill Christians. But because of meeting Christ as the light, he's able to shine, to be a witness. And I believe all of us, we are the light of the world. Let us not only say that we are the light, but let us be doers of the light. Let us be a witness for Christ. Alright, so I'm done with my sharing for today. Is it okay if I close with a prayer? All right, I'll close with a prayer. Yeah, let's pray. Our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for um, giving us this truth, pointing us to the Christ, to Christ who died for us on the cross. Lord, today we have learned about the candlestick. Lord, I believe that we as church, we are connected as one because through Christ we can do all things. Lord, I believe that you are the wine, you are the vine and we are the branches. And I believe that without you, we can do nothing. So Lord, yes, we, can, we may know that we are the light, but if we do not have the Holy Spirit in us, we do not ask for your guidance, it's pointless, Lord. Lord, I pray, Lord, in this time of trouble, how can we do this as a practical lesson? I believe that we can go and search for those who are lost. Lord, the light is to be in the dark place. And some of our friends or some of our family members, they are lost in the dark place. And help us to be the light, to shine in their life, to be a witness for them. And I pray that in this time of pandemic, 
we are able to bring more souls to you, Lord, and help us not to be lazy, help us to be fruitful, knowing that we are able to do all things to Christ who strengthens us. Lord, help us not to hide this light in the bush, but help us to be proud of it, knowing that our God is our strength. The Holy Spirit will guide us to touch the life of others. Lord, help us to continually burn. Help us not to just uh, do it in seasons, but help us to do it every single day. To come back to you and knowing that our Christ has died for us on the cross. Lord, I pray that each and every one of us will remember this lesson. A lesson that we know that without you, we can do nothing. So help us, Lord, to always seek you with prayer. Like how the show bread, Lord, talking about the Word of God. Help us to study your Word every single day. Help us to witness for you every single day, Lord. And help us, like the altar of incense, Lord, to pray. To pray to you every single day. Help us to pray. Help us to read your Word. And help us to be a witness. This is the duty of us, Lord, as a lighthouse church. Help us to shine the light for those who are in darkness. We thank you so much for answering our prayers because we believe in a God a God who is a good listener. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.